Welcome back to He Can Fix Anything, where I fix just about anything. Today we're going to be working on a 2004 Toyota Prius, and this repair should apply anywhere from 2003 to 2009. Uh, that's the second generation of the Prius. Now this Prius has a stripped out drain plug, and so the customer has not been able to change the oil. And so we're going to be changing that oil pan, putting a new one on today. These are the parts that are required for today's job. I have a new oil pan, the gasket set, oil filter, and oil. I'll have links for all of these in the video description below. Here's what we're gonna need for today's project. A reliable jack. It doesn't have to be a floor jack like this one, but a bottle jack or even the jack that comes with your car to change your tire will work. Uh, some good quality jack stands to hold it safely in the air, and an oil pan to drain the oil into. It's also good to have some heavy duty paper towels on hand, uh, either that or just a regular you know, type of hand towel, grease rag. Some parts cleaner is very helpful. And then one 10 millimeter socket, an extension, a ratchet. These are all three eighths size. I would actually recommend quarter inch if you have them. Uh, I just couldn't find my 10 millimeter quarter inch socket this morning. Uh, you'll also need a filter wrench. Uh, this one is very versatile as far as the angles that it can loosen the oil filter. Um, an open end wrench or an adjustable wrench like this is okay if you have an actual wrench set. Uh, those are always better. A gasket scraper and a screwdriver might be necessary to help pry the oil pan down. Now the first thing we're going to do is jack up the car to get it off the ground. Always use jack stands as a safety precaution. I am not usually a shade tree mechanic, but I am today. My uh, shop is tied up, so I'm going to be working out here in creation. Now once you've let the uh, jack down and the full weight is on the stands, and these have sunk in a little bit, which is fine, uh, before you pull the jack out, it's always a good practice to give the car a good shake to make sure everything's settled and nothing's going to move. So you can see the pan is uh, right out in the open. That's nice. The oil filter is right out in the open. That's nice. And so let's go ahead and get to the job. All right, we are going to start off with a... 10 millimeter socket, an extension, and a ratchet. Now, if there's one thing that you should have three of, that's 10 millimeter tools. Uh, because I was gonna use my quarter inch ratchet on this because I don't need this big oversized ratchet. Uh, but I couldn't find, I had all the other sizes in my quarter inch box, but my 10 millimeter was missing. So we'll just pull all these off. They'll come out pretty easy. And then normally, the first thing you would do is uh, drain the oil, but since the drain plug is stripped out, that's not an option. So we're gonna have to be careful as we let this thing down. What I'm attempting to do by leaving one bolt in was to having this corner come down first, but it looks like this pan, when it was replaced, they didn't use a normal gasket. They used silicone instead. So it is really stuck on good. If it had the normal cork gasket in it, uh, it would have come off pretty, pretty easily. But yeah, live and learn. Now, depending on how cleanly uh, the pan came off, you may need to use a gasket scraper. And so I have this little jewel right here. 
Now, I just finished sharpening it because just like the most dangerous knife is a dull knife, the most dangerous gasket scraper is a dull one. I actually have several stitches, scars on one hand because I was using a dull gasket scraper back in the day. But uh, the silicone comes off pretty easy. Now you wanna be careful. Another reason to have it sharp is because a dull one may have some nicks on it and that, um, this is aluminum and it could actually gouge in there a little bit. And you wanna avoid put any, putting any scratches or gouges in that aluminum because it's just a path for oil to leak out later on. Speaking of hands, now you wanna be careful because a lot of times there's a sharp edge, but a lot of times your hand can see better than your eyes. And so you wanna just feel the surface, make sure all the gaskets, yeah, that's a sharp edge right there. Just to make sure all the gaskets off because any leftover gasket material, just like a gouge or a scratch is a path for oil to leak out. And then if you were just uh, putting the old pan back on, you'd want to go ahead and go over the old pan at the same time. Now, one thing I'll do here is get some brake cleaner to spray this down. Uh, you don't want to have that stuff splash in your eye. Believe me, it burns like crazy. And probably is a little bit at risk of damage, but it is a great degreaser. And so, and it dries super fast. So I would, yeah, a little bit more left there. Give that a quick spray down with some brake cleaner, just so the uh, the new gasket has a nice oil-free surface to bond to. So this is the uh, brake cleaner that I use. Uh, I've been using this for years, really like it. And like everything else I use here, I'll have a link for it in the description below. So just spray a little bit on, on the rag and then just come and wipe now there's like here there's a little bit of oil dripping down so it might actually be good to wipe the inside a little bit and then go over it again so it's all ready for the new pan and gasket now with the new pan, I would go ahead and wipe it again, especially if this was not a painted surface. But since it's painted, most likely it is completely oil free from the factory. But uh, if it's metal, a lot of times they'll put a thin coat of oil on it, uh, if it's bare metal, to just keep it from rusting. So, and that quick, it's dry. Now I am a big fan of Felpro gaskets. I've been using their products for more than 30 years and they've always just performed perfectly for me. Now this particular set comes with the gasket and two small tubes of silicone. There's probably enough silicone here if you wanted to only use that. Uh, you could to glue this back together, but because these are installed at the factory with this type of gasket and they're engineered to use this type of gasket, uh, I'm a proponent of uh, going back with the original type gasket. And then I'll use a little bit of the silicone on all the bolts just to make sure that they are sealed up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a little silicone on this just to uh, hold the gasket in place uh, while I'm assembling it. That'll just help hold everything in place good. There we go. get on here I'll we'll give it a few minutes just to uh, kind of set up a little bit now you don't want to let it set up completely because um, you want the silicone to squish a little bit and uh, again to avoid any gaps the other thing you want to do is you're putting this on to make sure that all the bolt holes are lined up well, I have changed my mind. Um, one thing I was thinking about is that you probably noticed when I started cracking this oil pan loose, the oil started coming around, you know, leaking out from all the edges. That means that this gasket is submerged in oil. The oil doesn't sit down in it, and this is above the oil line. It's actually the oil line is up in 
the uh, aluminum case above this. And so what I've decided to do is go ahead and put silicone all the way around here. Uh, so it's a full, full bead, put the gasket on, then silicone the top of the gasket so that it is totally encased in the silicone and that will help reduce the risk of leaks. Now an important key to using silicone is using the right amount. People tend to put too much silicone on and the purpose of it is just to fill the gap between the two mating surfaces, which in this case, since we're using a gasket, uh, the mating, the, the gap is very, very small. And actually the purpose of the silicone is just to, is a sealant uh, to make sure the oil doesn't leak out. Okay, so now I have the gasket in place, the silicone on both sides of it, nice and thin. Uh, the risk of putting too much on, aside from it being wasteful, is that as you tighten that down, some will squeeze inside, it could break off and actually clog up the pickup tube, uh, which cause oil starvation in your engine. And it's just ugly and sloppy looking, and so it's good to put a thin coat on. Now, in combination with this thin coat, the warm sunny weather and a nice breeze, this is gonna to wanna to dry pretty quick, so I need to get it up on the engine. Start by getting this stud put back. Get the nut on there. The other stud actually came out on the bolt. So we'll get three of these in place to hold it. You may notice I'm kind of doing every other one just to, just to help with the tightening sequence so it doesn't squeeze all the way around. You want to tighten it evenly. The other thing I'm doing, and this is one of the other reasons I wanted to use my quarter inch ratchet, is as I tighten this, I'm choking way down on here uh, because if you're out here, you're going to accidentally put too much torque on it. You could break a bolt, you could over tighten it. And this just doesn't need that much tightening. I don't know what the torque spec is, but it just doesn't need that much pressure. So that's how I'm going to tighten these up. And just kind of keep going around, tightening them evenly to about the same, about the same torque. This one, I think the threads had a little damage because it's not seated, but it's a little bit tight. So I have to watch. You can feel it. I mean, when it when it gets seated, you start to see a little squeeze out of there. You know that you're seated. You just want to be careful not to squish that gasket too much. This is where patience is key. And see what I'm doing, I'm just holding it like this. It limits the strength of my wrist and limits the risk of me over tightening. Just going around a few times evenly, that'll do it. There, that's it. Now, as you can see here, little bit of material squished out but very little sometimes you'll get into one of these jobs and you'll just see the silicone is just hanging down it's dripped or so maybe somebody's come over with a rag and wiped it off um, that doesn't really do anything for you to have too much there and uh, the right amount is the right amount 
The last thing that I want to do that I didn't check earlier. Now this is not obviously the right wrench, but this is, shouldn't be too tight and it shouldn't be too loose. And so just want to get on there, loosen a little bit, tighten a little bit, just to make sure. I didn't double check to make sure that was tight. And it would be a shame to put the oil in here and drive down the road and have this start to leak out of here. And so, and again, just a little snug, but not super tight. Now, when you do this type of a job, it is the perfect time to go ahead and change the oil filter since you're gonna be putting new oil in. And there's a couple options there. One is this type of a band filter wrench, which when you have room is great, but this is kind of tight. So I have these filter pliers. I think I picked them up at Walmart, hyper tough. You know, you don't have to spend a lot, a lot of money on this kind of stuff. They tend to crush the filter a little bit, but they can get in there and loosen them. Now, that's surprising. That's actually really good. Um, I'm not a big fan of Fram oil filters for a couple of reasons. One, their gaskets seem to get stuck and, um, and make them very difficult to get off. I've had more trouble over the years with Fram oil filters. I personally will not use them. In this case, the customer bought the oil filter ahead of time, so I'll put it on. Um, but that's, that's the main issue that I have with frame oil filters. I, th I think the quality is probably okay. They're not the best in the industry as far as filtering capability, but the biggest problem I've had with them over the years is that the gasket sticks and they don't loosen up. But this one, when it was put on, was not over tightened, which again is common uh, for people to over tighten these filters. When I put the new one on, I'll show you the proper tightening procedure. After you let that drip for a little while, it's good to wipe everything. The way this runs down the engine, it makes a little bit of a mess. But the most important thing is the sealing surface, this where the gasket goes, is clean of all dirt and debris. A little oil or residue obviously is not bad. And so make sure that's clean. Clean around here. Now, the better quality filters, they usually come with a little plastic uh, cellophane or cap or something, and, and the ring is pre-greased. But again, this is a fram. So what I do with a clean finger, dip it in the used oil, and just put a little bit of a ring of oil. It doesn't need to be much, just enough to coat the surface. All right, I'm gonna put this up here. Bend it on until it touches. Actually, let me just show you here. So the instructions, see what they say. One, wipe the thing. Two, put a little oil on it. Three, gosh, certainly doesn't tell you anything. But yeah, it says three, screw it on. A little bit of Captain Obvious stuff there. But the best way to do it is you, is you spin it on until it seats, right? See, so it just touches there, just till you feel that. Then you can go half to three quarter turn. So there's a quarter, there's a half, and that's about it, perfect. So when it comes time to change that filter again, it will spin right off. And one thing I do like about this versus the filter I just took off is they have this grip surface on here, which is really helpful, especially if you have a little bit of an oil leak and this gets oily but uh, that's ready to go everything's tightened up everything's sealed up new filter time to put oil in it now the only thing left to do is to put oil in it and double check the oil level after you start the engine and so this particular one uses 5w30 and um, you want to use a funnel if you don't have a funnel you make a funnel and so out of the Mountain Dew, you just slammed. Now my customer's on a tight budget and asked me which oil to buy. And I told her, just go to Walmart, buy SuperTech, and buy the full synthetic. You'll save money buying the, the Walmart brand. And fully synthetic is not that much more, but it's a far superior quality oil to conventional oil. Um, there is a YouTube channel called Project Farm. And he does a lot of product comparisons. He's not sponsored by anyone. 
and uh, so you know he gives unbiased results and he tests different kinds of oil and he even goes and tests uh, super tech he tests amazon, amazon basics oil and um, what most people don't know is this is not manufactured by walmart uh, this is not from their factory this is manufactured by a major brand name oil company we don't know which one but when this was tested up against the brand names of you know supposedly higher quality definitely more expensive this was as good or better than than their competitors and so i don't have any problem using super tech in my own cars that wraps up the project i hope this video was helpful to you and saved you some money have a great day